A team of young university students and scientists set its sights on the last unexplored planet in the solar system. You know, if somebody said, well, were you all obsessed with Pluto, I think we would all have to plead guilty. At the time, Ralph McNutt is a physics professor at MIT. I think I did always dream of being an explorer. I've been a space cadet since I was a kid. And at that time, Pluto was just this incredible big question mark. All we knew was it was a spot of light in the sky. But with the dwarf planet three billion miles away and smaller than our own moon, even the best telescope images are too small to reveal any detail. The best image from the Hubble Space Telescope of Pluto is this fuzzy ball that's about six square pixels by six square pixels. So here are these upstart kids that were saying, we ought to go to Pluto. We ought to finish out the exploration of the solar system. So at some point, the moniker Pluto Underground was born. Yeah, the Pluto Underground, I like to call them the Pluto Mafia. These are the folks who, you know, spent almost their entire careers uh, studying Pluto. You know, Pluto was the end game. This was our opportunity to finish the task of the exploration of the solar system. Young graduate students united by their fascination with the outer solar system, the Pluto Underground, want NASA to make their dream a reality. And one man would lead them there, Dr. Alan Stern. We weren't going to answer specific questions. We were going to collect data sets with our eyes wide open to see what was there, literally exploring, literally flying into the unknown. The Pluto Underground form a plan to fly a spacecraft within 8,000 miles of Pluto's surface, almost 30 times closer than the moon is to Earth. As it flies overhead, the probe will turn and snap the first photographs of the planet's mysterious terrain. But the plan faces an uphill battle. NASA could be doing quicker missions closer to home and trying to mount an inexpensive mission all the way to the edge of the solar system is a fool's folly. Alan, Alan is a very unique person. And, uh, you know, I think this was almost superhuman act of absolutely dogged determination over the years that made this happen. Dr. Stern is hopeful that the images will solve an ancient mystery. Pluto orbits in a mysterious region of space, densely packed with unusual moons, dwarf planets, and other misfit objects. The final frontier in the solar system is the Kuiper Belt, this region of leftover objects from the formation of the solar system. And Pluto is the largest of those objects. It's a very important region for understanding the birth of the solar system. This means that Pluto is a four and a half billion year old fossil, holding clues about how our own planet was formed. The Kuiper Belt was discovered, and Pluto went from being this lone misfit in the outer solar system to the biggest, the baddest, and the brightest member of that entire population. This was a very rich scientific target. After all, it's a long way away, so you better have an awful good reason. In 2003, the Pluto Underground convinces NASA, and the New Horizons mission is born. We had a lot of difficulties associated with getting to Pluto, uh, one of which is it's three billion miles away. We're driving to, you know, 33 times as far from the sun as the Earth is. The longer a spacecraft travels, the greater chance something could go wrong. So the team wants to reach Pluto within 10 years of launch. The New Horizons spacecraft was going to be the fastest ever to leave the Earth, more than 30,000 miles per hour taking off. That's more than 50 times faster than a jetliner. To cross a three billion mile ocean of space required us to travel at this crazy speed. When I was a boy, Apollo missions took three days to reach the moon. New Horizons is going to reach the moon in nine hours. How's that for speed? To achieve that record-breaking speed, New Horizons must be light. 
The less weight a launch vehicle has to push against Earth's gravity, the faster it can go. The size of a small piano, New Horizons will weigh just 1,000 pounds, and it can carry only enough fuel for minor course corrections. Once it reaches Pluto, it cannot slow down and enter orbit. There is no second chance. You're flying by. There's no stopping it. The spacecraft is on a path, a beeline past Pluto. Either you were going to get it or you weren't. And it was, it's terrifying, <laughs> to tell you the truth. But if it works, New Horizons will capture thousands of images in incredible close-up detail. Three, two, one. We have and liftoff of New It was a picture-perfect launch. It couldn't have been any better. But still, it was yet another nine and a half years before we finally get to, to Pluto. But there's plenty to do while the team waits, including a close pass of another planet. We needed to pick up some extra energy in order to be able to actually get to Pluto on schedule. We had this opportunity to fly near Jupiter, steal a little you know, gravity assist from Jupiter, and increase our speed by 20% and cut three years off the travel time to, to Pluto. In February 2007, Jupiter's gravity propels New Horizons like a slingshot toward its destination. After nearly nine and a half years of traveling through space, New Horizons is a mere 10 days away from its historic flyby. I got a frantic call from Alan Stern, the principal investigator, and I could tell that he was breathing hard. He was running down the hallway and he said, we've lost communication with the spacecraft. This had never happened in nine and a half years of flight. How could it be happening today? at the last minute, just on the verge of, of summiting Mount Everest. Why now? How? What have we done? We have no spacecraft, no signal, no knowledge of what's going on. It started to sink in that we may be experiencing something that's abnormal on the spacecraft. And I can't tell you how that feels. Alice Bowman is the mom, or mission operations manager for New Horizons. You allow yourself those 10 seconds of feeling, you know, oh my God, what's going on? And then, you know, your training kicks in. Alice was in charge of the recovery effort, and there was no way she was gonna let this fail after nine and a half years. We knew we could fix it. The question was, could we fix it in time for the flyby sequence that was supposed to start on July 7th? Over the course of three sleepless days, the team uploads command codes to New Horizons, nearly three billion miles across the solar system. We're able to get that sequence or set of instructions loaded to the main computer. And we had four hours to spare. Seven days later, the morning of the Pluto flyby has come. Hang on to your seats because the roller coaster ride is on. As media from across the world gathers at Johns Hopkins University outside Baltimore, Maryland, all eyes are on Dr. Alan Stern. We passed inside the orbit of Hydra, the outermost moon of Pluto. And he's brought an early surprise for the New Horizons team. the night before closest approach, we made a point of sending home a handful of images in spectra. They were the highest resolution images that had ever been obtained. Pluto went from being just a small image in the distance, sort of like a jeweled Christmas ornament, to all of a sudden this massive world with unparalleled complexity.